Who's sitting in grandma's chair? Satan. <laughs> really? I beg to differ. Who's in the room with us? Thank you. Are we happy in this room? Come on, let's go. Hey, Knockers, Richard Ryder here with another episode of Knock Knock Ghost. And this week, we are in Bracebridge, Ontario at the Inn at the Falls. I'm here with my intrepid assistant, Brian Doyle, and no ghost hunt would be complete without Jim Hunt, our resident psychic. So let's get to the nitty gritty and find out some history and stories. Okay, so for 130 years, the Inn on the Falls has been here in Bracebridge. And for the last year, Joanne Mantle has been the manager here. How are you, Joanne? I'm fine, thank you. So, haunted yes? Yes. Scarily so? No. No? All right. I think that's good enough for me. Let's talk about it. As long as I don't cry like a girl on camera, Joanne. I'm expecting a lot of things to happen tonight at the Inn in the Falls. Rumor has it this is a very, very active location. It's uh, interesting. It's exciting. And I think it's just secluded enough that we're going to uh, definitely be impressed. So we're going to an inn. And quite frankly, it's an inn. It's super cute. It's in the Muskoka area, which is super beautiful cottage country. Like, how creepy can an inn be, really? You know, it's it's an inn. There's not going to be a lot of people there. There's not going to be a lot of people there. We're going to be alone. Oh, my God. Actually, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably going to be really creepy. Oh, my God, I need to tell Richard. I don't know if I'm ready to do this. I was being warned as I was just entering the highway coming towards the city, which was uh, quite quaint, very beautiful. There was a lot of different things out there that were... Uh, making me feel like I was at home, but to be very aware that there was something out there that I needed to know had to be addressed. At first, the inn doesn't really scare me because it's an inn. You know, inns are cute, and they're quaint, and, and they're fun. But when we're doing our ghost hunt, it's going to be completely devoid of any souls, except for us and the dead. This is lovely. Yes. So Joanne, you've managed the property for last year. Mm -hmm. It's been 130 years it's mm -hmm. been the Inn on the Falls. Over the course of that time, has it always been a hotel? Now, someone did mention they thought it was a house first and then it became the Inn. Mm -hmm. And then I guess after previous owners, you know, it's been sold and bought. Right. They've uh, bought the streets, the so, all so, the houses on the street. Because we have the Mews next door. We yes. have the houses across, and they're all part of the hotel. They're all and part you have, of the hotel. Yeah. And you have rooms to rent out from all yes, of them. Yes, yes. How many rooms in total? I think about 38. So over the course of the year you've been here, you've mm -hmm. heard uh, a few of oh, the stories. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Oh, a lot. Yeah. Okay, there are a lot. from staff and right. from guests. Yeah. Okay, all right. So I think what we need to do is maybe uh, uh, go to some of the different parts of the house where the stories have mm -hmm. taken place. Oh, yeah, All sure. right, where the first one, the stairs? Yes. All right, I'm afraid, <laughs> but you have to hold no, my hand. No. Okay. <laughs> When you're seeing old furniture and old, uh, like, needlepoint ottomans and uh, uh, room dividers, I think it puts your mind into a different time and it makes it easier, definitely, to accept that there could be otherworldly uh, things going on. Okay, so Joanne, we're at the uh, top of the main stairwell in the main house at the Inn on the Falls. What's the story here? The story here is that the our spirit lady that was pregnant had fallen down these stairs. Oh. Yeah, there's stories that she was pushed or that she fell. Possibly even jumped? No, I don't no, think no. so. No, no, okay. All right, and you were mentioning a uh, lawyer? A judge. A judge, judge okay. Judge Mahaffey. And he was in the house at, yes. at one point yes. as well, not yes. connected to the, the pregnant woman. Well, I heard he was. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. So he may have... Yes. Been, and did he that die in the property? That is one of the stories I heard. Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. and natural causes? Yeah, I, as far as I know. Of course, choking's natural. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at room 105. This is the haunted room in the whole hotel. Yes, this is the one that has the most activity. All right, I'm afraid. 
Oh, well, this is actually a lovely room. I caught yes. this. This is lovely. This is a Look beautiful at that bed. room. Yes. So this is the haunted room. Most yeah. people get a uh, sense of activity here. Yes. What are some of the things people have said to you? There are blankets being flipped. TV like off the bed? Off where they'll be sleeping and it'll come off. The TV goes off and on. I often get calls about that. Wow. But they said it'll come on or they'll be watching something and it shuts off. And do people hear voices or? Whispering. Really? Some oh, that would drive me crazy. Whispering, yeah. But this is a popular room. Everybody wants to stay in here. Well, it's a beautiful room, but you've also mm -hmm. had people leave in the middle of the night. Yes, we did have one lady. But she still comes back to the hotel? Oh, yes. She just stays somewhere else. Somewhere yeah. else. She likes to have a good night's sleep, <laughs> yeah, does she? Yeah, yeah. Do you have people that want the room specifically because they know it's haunted and yes. want to experience it? I've had young guys come with night goggles. And they just sit up they all night with the goggles They want to sit up on? to see something, yeah. How? Yeah. I, I can't imagine anyone doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me weird tonight with my goggles on. <laughs> For me, I figure, oh, put a camera in my room. You know, the only thing that gets me up in the middle of the night is my bladder. What if the sheets get knocked off of me, like ripped off by some entity? Because, you know, I sleep al fresco. It's a lot of fresco to be out. Oh, I don't know what scares me more. Ghosts or Richard wearing night vision goggles? This, uh, as, as, is a bar's wand, a lot of activity, a lot of people coming and going. Mm -hmm. So you must have had some good stories from down here. Yes, usually it's from uh, staff at mm -hmm. night. Uh, I had one young lady server who would get her hair pulled. While and she was closing while up? While she was cleaning up and stuff, and then she had long hair. Right, right. so it would just be a, a tug. Yeah, be a tug. And she'd and be like, well, what was that? And there's nothing, yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. And the other uh, story I heard from uh, one of the gentlemen that worked here, he was cleaning up, and the door over here right. goes up into the kitchen. This right one right end, here, right. Yes. And a little girl appeared. No. And then he said, oh, no, honey, you know, you can't be here. Then he continued, then he realized there are no kids here. And how did she get in the kitchen? So he ran upstairs and nothing. And did he describe what she was wearing, what she looked no. like? No, just the, saw a little he girl, just, yeah, that yeah. was all he Curly needed. Hair. Yeah, that's it. How yeah. odd. So for the ghostly minded, yes. there is a destination here that's yeah. open. Because a lot of places will say, oh, we're not haunted. Yes. And they shut everyone down. You're quite mm -hmm. proud that you're haunted. Well, because it's good. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we'll talk about that at four in the morning when I'm crying like a girl. <laughs> now, how do we get a drink in here? All of a sudden, I, I feel another presence around me. He says, don't you think that man is guilty? And immediately, I had this TV turned on in my bedroom. Welcome back, knockers. We are at the Inn on the Falls in Bracebridge, Ontario, one of Canada's most haunted hotels. In fact, I think the only hotel that's more famous for being haunted has to be the one from The Shining. Oh, thank you. So we are going to do our ghost walk, and I think the best place to start is at the top in the infamous room 105. This is the most, ah! What are you doing? Weren't you just behind this bar? No, I was upstairs reading. Who handed me that beer? I don't know, but why are you drinking? We have a ghost walk to do. Have I been here the whole time? So we're in the bar last night of, of the Inn uh, by the Falls, uh, talking about what we were going to be shooting. It was great because there was a lot of activity. Uh, Jim was seeing a lot of orbs. Um, he was very excited. It was like a kid in a candy shop. He kept pointing at things and running over, and, and uh, we all had our cell phones out. And there were a couple of, of orbs in, in photos. My, my jury's still out on what orbs are. I, I would feel a lot better about orbs if I could see them myself, not just in a photo. This whole experience, right from the get-go, started out really creepy. We were doing our standard protection meeting, and orbs were everywhere. We were like taking cell phone pictures and like videos on our iPhones and stuff, and they were just all over the place. There was lots of activity. Jim was talking to a lot of different people. It was like it was really creepy. There was a lot of people there that were joining the party. I was 19 years old and I was uh, driving along the lakeshore. My girlfriend to the right of me, as we were driving, I said, could you please stop the car? Could you please stop the car? As we stopped the car, there was another car that had lost control, came down the hill and went right across from where we were going to be driving and hit the pole. She said, uh, I think it's time for me to drive me home. Oh, 
you dismiss the man that was standing there, whoever the heck that man was. I can definitely feel the energy just pulling at me. Like they don't want me to go. Like they, I'm being dragged this way all the time. And these puzzles of her little girl spirit that's in here. We're going to talk to her today as well. I think her name is Lisa. I picked that up very strongly. And uh, she might get a kick out of some of this. The colors are always interesting for children when they're around. I don't know if that entity or that ghost, Jim, who stands over there, turns around and just, because he did this and moved and did this again. And as soon as I walk in, he's gone. But it was a dark form. Jim wasn't a dark form. It just looked like you and I. got an orb under the table. An orb is an actual entity, an, uh, a spirit that can't materialize completely into something that we can see as a full vision. That's the way that they keep their energy, their strength. It'll be a full ball of light. You'll always see some form of a spirit inside an orb. I wish the camera can see this, but we have a woman sitting right here, constantly mending or sewing or fixing or doing something. She was a caretaker of this place. She died here. She always made sure that the servers are doing what they should be doing without fighting, that type of thing you can. It's very interesting. So she stands right here. She's pregnant, she falls. Huh. Like that. It was interesting, uh, 105 is the room that I got uh, blessed to sleep in overnight, and I'm still wondering, even though I'm a psychic, why do I get the scariest rooms? It was a room that had energy that wanted to control. As soon as you stepped into that room, you knew that there was somebody that was in charge. You would feel a heaviness or a presence around you that wasn't pleasant at all. So the first time that I had walked in here was yesterday afternoon, Friday, and um, what I had seen was a woman sitting at the blue chair and uh, there was a very musty smell into the room that was very uncomfortable and uh, I felt a heavy presence in this room and it was uh, something that I was actually looking forward to and being afraid, uh, not so much afraid as I was more inquisitive about uh, getting a lot of uh, connectivity to any type of apparition or any type of spirit or ghost. Everything was normal. I did feel a presence of activity when I put my head on the pillow. I got a couple of knocks on the wall. All of a sudden, I felt like someone spooning me, but in a very stern voice, but almost in a joking way said, it's time to get up. And I'm going, what? And I turned around and I got up out of bed. I really jumped, got up into the sitting position, sat down and just put my feet on the ground just to make sure that it was okay. All of a sudden, I. I feel another presence around me. He says, don't you think that man is guilty? And immediately I had this TV turn on in my bedroom. And then he, he, it immediately brought to the CNN news about the Boston terror attack. It was just astounding. And I just said, yes, they're guilty. And then, then everything went quiet in the room and it, and it let me be for a little while. And I was very, very uncomfortable about the whole situation. So of course there was all this activity happening over in Jim's room and in my room, I'm dead to the world, which is convenient because the place is haunted. So Lisa, are you anywhere near the bear right now? Can you make it talk? Do you know your alphabet? Mm -hmm.
Welcome back, knockers. Before we start tonight's ghost walk, Joanne was kind enough to give us some more detailed information on the history of the Inn at the Falls here in Bracebridge, Ontario. Built as a private residence in 1876 by John Adair, the house was then sold to William Mahaffey, a landowner and lawyer who then became the first district judge of Muskoka and Perry Sound. There are two deaths on record happening here in the inn. The first one in 1930, Mrs. Kirk fell down the stairs, not only killing herself, but her unborn child. Or was she pushed? And in the 40s, Jackie Nivens died in the house. Now, let's go find Jim and Brian and start this ghost hunt. So we're just about to start the ghost hunt. And I am extremely anxious, but like in a, I'm completely terrified anxious way. That has everything to do with what happened last night. After all of that, I'm now expecting them to really amp it up now that they've had like a full 24 hours to play with us. I could not wait to get started into this evening's investigation. So both Richard and Jim are really super excited to get started and I am not at all. I want no part of it. They're like, all of these things are going to happen and they're going to be, ooh, look at that. Look at that. That's so great. No, it's not great. It's terrifying. Are you kidding? No, no. Hey, knockers. It is the witching hour at the Inn at the Falls in Bracebridge, Ontario. I'm standing here with our intrepid ghost hunter, Jim Hunt. Hi there. Jim, yes. what do you think? I think we're going to have an amazing evening. Okay, what are you predicting? We're going to see or hear many, many knocks, grinds, talking. And what are you hoping to find out? I'm hoping to meet the people that uh, you have investigated. Okay, so I've, I've been talking to people here, yes. Joanne, and uh, reading some information about the, the uh, inn. You don't have that information. I have no information at you, all. what are you hoping to see? There's uh, children here. I can feel the laughter. There's a whole bunch of energy in this room whole place that is unbelievable and it's freaking me out already so oh you know what children that reminds me i have something special planned really where is he where's who uh, listen okay, let's go where is he where is he oh my god what are you doing i'm right here oh god here he is what's that this is the ghost bear it's the bear that talks to ghosts and he put it in with my babies? God. I promise you, I'll take care of all of you and I'll watch out for all of you if you feel anything. But secondly, any small sulfur, any type of of uh, uncomfortableness that you're feeling or you're, you're not feeling yourself, let me know. Mm -hmm. And as well as you see, see, see me glossy-eyed or something that's... I can't even see you in this light, so I'm not... Okay, but light. you might see me um, slur my words. I might look a little bit different. I might look lethargic, okay? Turn the lights on and just keep on calling my name, okay? Just in case, because the, the medium side of me is really, really standing out. And it's like uh, they're trying to go through me to talk, but I want them to talk on their own. You actually lose uh, a form of control. You know that it's there. If you are a weak person, if you are a person that is susceptible to being controlled in your daily life, then you are certainly going to be controlled in your spiritual life. And these are what poltergeists look for. And they are so mischievous and so powerful that they can and will take over your body. Okay, the energy in here now is getting a little bit tighter. Okay, what does that mean? I'm feeling a lot more um, kinetic energy, mostly from the spirits themselves, mm -hmm. and they're at a loss. As to what's going on? or So something just black just walked across the bar, right through and out that small window. Okay. And, wow. I have a man in the other room right now mm -hmm. with his arms crossed looking at us from the painting now you saw him the first night we got here yeah. is that the same man same man and he's staying there already is he still just as angry he's just as angry and very upset 
And he's at, like, why is he angry? Because people are here? I mean, this is a public place. He must be used to people being here. Um, this was his domain. This is some place that belongs so to him. So this is just the thing he this carries with him. This is the thing him. that he carries with him. He does never liked the change in here at all. Oh, so could he have possibly have been part of the, the land when it was a private home? It, absolutely. I think that he was a caretaker here just as much as anything. And I can feel his presence. Like, it's very, very, he's not a happy soul here whatsoever. So I have something right here. So take a Everything photo. Everything is around. The woman with that white dress is right here. Oh, is she? Well, she now... She's right here. In talking to uh, Joanne yes. and reading some of the literature, the woman in white has yes. been seen by this coffee maker as well as up in the main lobby. Just to be clear, I didn't say that the coffee maker saw the ghosts. I said the ghosts have been spotted by the coffee maker. Still sounds wrong. In the proximity of the coffee maker, ghosts have been known to appear. Is that right? So, Jim, if you're seeing the woman in white there, let's see what the spirit box can get. Okay. Uh, okay, so the reception down in here is pretty bad. But that shouldn't matter. With white noise, they should still be able to talk to us. I just heard a help. I picked up a soft little girl's voice that just said, Help? That's okay. really creepy. So that's Lisa. Can you see if that is Lisa? Hi, Lisa. What's that beat? It's her trying to communicate. Oh, is it? Absolutely. Just that the frequency is not grabbing enough information that we can hear her talking to us. I'm, there we go. Starting to wake up. I have a very, um, uh, we just had a whole bunch of spirits just walk right through you, Ryan. Oh, well, that explains why I'm so cold. We're being addressed to go to the back. Oh, yeah? Um, like that back? That back. Can we bring the spirit box with us? Yes, we can, absolutely. I'm going to carry it. Stood on end. I feel so creeped out and cold right now. Hi, is there anybody in the room with us? Oh, oh, that was great. Jeez. Is somebody stomping their foot? Hello? There's movement upstairs. Like I heard like stomping. Somebody just said that somebody's on the first floor. So something's excited now because it just moved up its rate. Is there somebody here with us? Not giving anything in here. I'm gonna slow down your rate a little bit. He said okay. Who is here with us? Chad. Chad? Who's Chad? What is going on over there? Can I sit down? I'm going to sit down with you. There's... Something flickering over here. Would that be the fire? Does that still turn itself on? If you, um, follow the, um, the box, the, uh, the spirit box and stay on it. I bet you you're gonna get some orbs that'll come across that, Richard. Okay. As soon as Jim says we're gonna get orbs, one goes right by Brian. It's not the only thing that goes by Brian. I saw something up over right there at the top of the door, right here, right against the brick, just on the inside of the brick. Oh, 
<laughs> but you have cold air right here now too. But this is a vortex for energy to come through, right? If you're in an environment uh, that you're working at, you're exhausted, you're tired, it can steal your energy, it can walk right into you, and it's like it's feeding off of that energy. You might not be aware of it, you could be partially asleep, partially, you know, doing your sleepwalk even, and you're wondering, how did I end up in this part of the room? That happens everywhere. Okay, so Jim, yeah. this is a boo bear. Yes, it is. Explain to people what a boo bear is for those of us well, those of our viewing audience who have no idea what we're talking okay, about. Okay, well, the bear has a couple of features. It will pick up on energy that it comes close to it, and it'll sense a temperature. So its arms, left and right paws, will light up in red, and that could, and that could signal something that's around. Mm -hmm. And do you sense Lisa reacting to this? Yes, I do. What is she reacting to? Uh, she's, she's actually... It just turned red just now on its own, and she's near the bear. Okay. So she is actually creating a thermal uh, temperature that could either be dropped and or is in front of the bear. And if it feels sensitive enough... One, two, three, four... It starts to talk. Richard brought this stupid bear that apparently you use to talk to ghosts. Great. That doesn't sound terrifying at all. All I want to do is see a ghost. Is that so much to ask? It was there to bring out the children that could have been around. If there's a young ghost that wants something to enjoy or feel comfortable around. And its belly would light up red if something had shown up, which was very interesting. So Lisa, are you anywhere near the bear right now? Can you make it talk? Do you know your alphabet? She's more near me, and she's right here. The uh, bear's paw is illuminating quite a bit, actually. It's quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting anything. And it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Can you touch the bear, Lisa? If you touch the bear, the bear will talk to you. Come closer, Brian. I don't want to. <laughs> look at, take a look now. Watch the paw. Start turning red. For you, it got warm in here. Yep, I was right. That's the creepiest thing of life. Out of nowhere, we had a dark entity, a cloud, a mist. It must have been a crossover, something from a vortex, because it didn't belong there. And it was really, really trying to control the room, because after that walked in, all the spirits, all the ghosts, all the orbs went sparse. They just took off in all directions we were left with this dark entity. So now, right now, Jim, you're behind the bar. Yes. There's, what's happening back there? So all I'm picking up is a colder energy that I had picked up right near where Brian was. And now I have the woman okay. at that coffee place. She's right there. Is she there right now? She's there right now. Brian, can you take a picture over by the coffee maker again? <laughs> See that? Oh, yeah. Exactly where I pointed it. So. It's, it's there. There's the flash of the camera at yeah. the door, but there's an actual orb right over there. There's also an orb on that wall. Yeah, two of them, one and two. And they're very strong, they're around. Oh, I was not expecting that. Just one more look. So. I don't see anything in there. We have orbs up here, up along that beam. Over here in the far corner near the door. I can't. Oh, I can see them now. They're One like right sitting there. at the chair. And it's not dust, because it, uh, dust lingers. So I don't see what you're seeing. There's above here, there's two. Okay. There's two. There's one at the door over here in the far corner. You have to hold the camera for yourself to see it. Take it yeah, off. Really I don't really see it. But again, I'm not, is that where you're seeing it here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess for me, I think with orbs, the problem I'm having is they're either very bright and moving or not at all, and I just don't see any consistency as to them being anything. 
I, I mean, I think I'll, I'll always find that frustrating, although we did have a good image of one flying over the spirit box spirit yesterday. Box, which was amazing. But that was yesterday. Yeah. So you're never going to get the same thing twice. No. Ever. Ever. Who the hell do you think you are? Come and try and do it again. Let's not make it angry, please. There's no way that you can come into this room. I forbid you to come into this room, actually. The inn made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. As soon as I walked in, uh, I can feel that there was a, a hustle and bustle of energy that was just moving nonstop. Uh, coming up to the top of the stairs, I saw someone right away. It doesn't matter time of day or night. If I'm seeing a spirit, they're there. They want to be noticed. They want to say something. One of the most interesting things about the inn at the falls is that over the span of 20 plus years, the one thing that seems constant is the different stories, the different people that people have seen or the voices that people hear. So uh, it certainly gives you some uh, sense of credibility. Uh, that uh, separate multiple sources are all saying the same thing. Now downstairs we tried the spirit box, but again, when this place was originally built in 17, uh, 1873, yes. uh, Masons built the foundation and some of it's three feet thick stone. So we're upstairs now on the main floor. Yes. Do you want to try the spirit box now? Yeah, why right. don't we do that? Do you want to talk to us right now? I got get out. Hello? Grandma Nivens? Hello, Grandma Nivens? Something's trying to, that I heard. We welcome you back here. This is your home. I love your home. So there we are with my favorite thing, the broken radio, AKA the spirit box. And Jim's asking it questions as he is wont to do. And uh, uh, we're not hearing that much, except all of a sudden it starts to chirp answers at him. And at first we didn't realize that's what was going on, but every time he asks a question, chirp. The terrifying voices have stopped emanating from this spirit box, which is great. I'm really, really happy that that stopped happening. And then the stupid box starts chirping. Really chirping? Is your mum with you? Did you enjoy your cigarettes here and there? Did you have your tea here? I very much thank you for inviting us here. I've enjoyed my stay. We're gonna leave tomorrow though, is that gonna be okay? Should I be afraid of anybody in here? What is the woman's name that used to cook for you? Do you know about the woman that fell down here and died? She died with her baby. What was that? Do you remember that death? Who did that? Did someone push her? Did somebody push her down the stairs? Because that's what I get. We were in the parlor and I had, um, had the spirit box with me. And I asked the spirit box if there had been a murder that had presented itself at the inn. And immediately there was a great big bang and everything had stopped. There was no more noise. It was just absolutely dead silence. So we're in room 105, which is the scariest room in this stupid inn. And I decided to get into bed. And Richard thought I was being lazy, but really I was conducting a scientific experiment to see if the covers would fling off of me. It was really comfortable. It was the most comfortable experiment I've ever done. We're all in room 105. I'm feeling a whole bunch of different energy. I'm trying to get everyone to see this because I'm really becoming frustrated with them to show themselves, to present themselves and they weren't doing anything. So that's when I started getting angry, which was uh, something I rarely do, but they were mischievous, they were playing with us, and I wanted them to come out, so I was provoking them. You should never provoke a ghost. Can you knock on the wall for me, please? I'm getting a little pissed off at you guys because you're not like 
doing anything that you were doing last night and you think that you're a little bit of smart ass? Why don't you make some freaking noise here? You're starting to piss me off because everything that you do and you say, you're trying to prove us wrong. We already know that the place is haunted. We've got enough pictures of orbs. I think you're just a little bit ignorant. Who are you to push on my body in this bedroom and tell me that it's time to get up? Why don't you make some noise? You think you're so smart. You think you're so cool. Step it up a little bit. Get out here. Knock on the wall. Please don't knock on my face. Too many, this is the perfect amount of energy for you. You have cameras, you have electrical devices, you have everything that you can do. Whoa. Is this a smart thing, Jim? You kind of goading, goading them? them? Uh, no, not really, not in this room, but I'm, can I'm a little like- Maybe not go You're fed them. up as a person. I'm, I'm fed up with their uh, inconsistency. Mm -hmm. They tried to scare me with the, with the water. They're trying to do all of this. They, they, they remember me sitting here. They remember me just sitting here, waiting for them to attack. <sighs> See, now I can't breathe and I'm, it's not, I'm not nervous. I'm just, I can't breathe because I get squeezed in from the energy. Come on. Obviously you have nothing to prove, do you? Come and push me off the bed. Oh, please don't ask it to do that. I don't want them to push me off the bed. What about the TV? <laughs> do you think you can turn on the TV? Turn the TV on last night. Do you think you can turn it on again? Was that you just resettling yourself? Because I felt the bed shake. No, I haven't touched. I, I haven't moved. Okay, I felt the bed shake underneath me. Like somebody sat or touched it or something or moved or shifted. So you really ha actually have nothing to prove, do you? Whoa. Oh. What? That was, there's something at the door. There's actually something at the door. It's a light that up blue as soon as you said that. The blue light, the EMF meter, the individual EMF meter is like a, a trip switch. When a spirit or a ghost walks by it or near it, it actually lets us know that something's around us or something near that, that allows us to know that there is a ghost. I'm going to go to get underneath the covers soon. I'm going to come towards the door. I'll let it in. Yeah, of course. Hello? You ready? Why don't you light up? And as you light up the light, I'll open the door. The door is freezing cold. The light won't even come on. Why don't you come and visit us? Why do I have to invite you? You came uninvited last night and you really pissed me off. Why don't you come back? Little smart asses, that's basically what you are. Please don't. You know what, I've had enough of your bull Why don't you get out here? Very little time do we have for you to tell me what to do, how to keep me in suspense. Why don't you come out here? Who are you to tell me what to do and when to do it? I'll do whatever I want. Don't think for one minute that I won't stick around and give you a hard time, ask you to leave. Send you to the light. Here's the knocks that you gave me yesterday. Remember those knocks? Did somebody hear something called? Yeah. Something? Yeah, that was a weird noise. Did you? So make? no one made that noise. I heard it. I, I was from the hallway. I heard like a. <laughs> I heard a. Came from over there behind the door. Remember those knocks? This is typical of all ghosts, spirits, that if they want to show up, they're going to show up. If they want to be mischievous, they're going to be mischievous. They wanted to show that they were in control of that place, not me. Oh, okay. I just saw the woman was pushed at this part of the railing, not at the beginning of the railing. Oh, over the railing. So she over, went over. She was pushed over. Oh, dear. Oh, that's how her and her baby died. I was drawn outside of my room. 
and I kept on seeing this woman being pushed over the stairs and she was pushed over and fell directly down the stairs and died shortly thereafter. And I saw that over and over again in about 15 minutes and it, it didn't stop. And I definitely, there was a gym presence in that whole scenario that I kept on seeing. While she was in there, the energy that I was picking up was uh, being held captive, being held against her will. And she was just basically trying to get a breath of fresh air. And I think that he thought he was, uh, this pregnant woman was going to escape so he couldn't take it anymore. He panicked and pushed her over the balcony pushed over. I just saw the whole thing. Can you knock once to tell me if that's true? Were you pushed over the railing? Just knock once. I, I, all I want to know is once. Knock once and tell me that you were pushed over the railing and you did not know. You and your baby are fine. I've always had to decipher what is reality and what is spirit, what is something that is in front of me, is that actually happening? I really have to ask myself and some things that I've learned when I don't know as a child if I was able to figure out if it was a ghost or a human being and I was too afraid to ask, I was given a stone, it was just a regular stone and my grandmother had put it in my hand and she said, if you don't know if it's a ghost, stick your hand out with that rock and ask that person to pick it up. Immediately I would know if that was a human being and they'd pick it up and I know would everything be okay. Then I knew what I was dealing with. I saw her being pushed. Because mm. going down a flight of stairs, I get it. Mm -hmm. You'd be injured, you could lose your baby, but I see how she went down the stairs. So mm -hmm. she was just pushed over and right at the right spot. So she hit the other railing with her head. Who the hell do you think you are? Come and try and do it again. Let's not make it angry, please. I don't want to have an angry ghost around my room. There's no way that you can come into this room. I forbid you to come into this room, actually. You don't belong here. You belong somewhere else. I'll put you out on the street. Welcome. Oh, look, you're showing up now. Show up a little bit more. It's freezing here, guys. <laughs> oh my God. Come on. Smart ass. Don't like those words, eh? Didn't somebody get called an ass earlier? Is that the ass that's in the hallway? Are you the one that killed your wife? Are you the one that pushed her? Oh, Jesus Christ. Get over here. Ugh. Stand up now. Who are you? Yeah, that's you right there, eh? A weak, weak, weak spirit. You have no right to kill anybody and you're living your life in fear for the rest of your spiritual life, you will never get a chance, never until she returns back to this life. Come back to me. Oh, I can provoke a ghost. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of any ghost. Get over here. Come on. Exactly. I'm angry as the evening is progressing because I am really not getting very much from that room when there was so much activity. You wanted this audience, our audience, to see what was actually happening to me, what was happening to our director, what was happening to other people in that facility, in that inn. It is as quiet as a ghost. Come to the door. Oh, there you are, smart ass, eh? Yeah, you're afraid of me. Don't come back. Step back into the door. There you are. So now you're talking to me. Let's communicate. Knock on the wall three times. He flashed it three times. Did I you see that? I just saw something underneath the door. You see it? It moved from left to right. Yeah. Come back out here. Come on. I'm about to shit myself. Come out. Prove yourself to me. You tried it last night. Try it now. You have no right to come back in here. Try and come in here right now. 
try and push yourself into here. You're a weak son of a bitch. Get in here. Don't tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. I'm right here. That's right. Right in front of you. I'm looking at you. Short little fat bastard. Get in here. Your wife never loved you and you didn't love the kid. So you wanted to destroy them. You're a baby killer. Come back out here. Destroying life. Nobody hurts a child. Nobody. That child didn't deserve to die. The shadow just went by again. So come now. I'm not afraid of you. There's movement over here. Movement, it's going right towards a rock. It's going right towards Richard right now. It's coming right across to you. It's moving like an orb, it's moving right around. It's going all around the room. I'm terrified. That's how I was lying, Brian, last night, and those blankets were ripped right off of me. <laughs> I, I honestly, I so, like... There's a shadow right behind me. Wow. Are we happy in this room? If I had troubles at the Grand Theater, Jim was having troubles at the Inn at the Falls. He, I've never seen him get angry, and certainly he's the first person to tell you not to uh, uh, provoke a ghost, and it seemed to me at one point he was becoming so uh, frustrated at their lack of anything that he seemed to be doing just that. It bothers me when Jim gets upset because he never gets upset, so if he's agitated, it's, it's for a good reason, and when you can't see the reason and he can, it's a little freaky. Jim telling us that he saw the man that killed the pregnant woman in, in retrospect, quite unnerving, but when you're around Jim a lot, he says things like that all the time. When Jim said that the man had killed that pregnant woman by like throwing her down the stairs, like, oh my God, that's awful. Like, I, like that made me sick to my stomach, that something that horrible was still like lurking about. Like, how awful. Like, like how awful. Like, I'm sorry, you deserve to be a ghost for the rest of your life. Or afterlife. Did something to say, Jim? Talk to me, who's in the room with us? Who's sitting in Grandma's chair? Satan. <laughs> really? I beg to differ. Who's in the room with us? Thank you. So Jim's back. He's the one from the bar, and it is such a darker energy than I even felt earlier in the day. He was so bound on hurting somebody that night. Who's the woman who used to sleep in this room? Wow. Are we happy in this room? Who's sitting in Grandma Nevin's chair? Give me his first name. We're all gonna go to bed soon and everything will be quiet. Are you happy with that? Can you say bye-bye? Did it just say look, just go? Huh. I'm gonna say goodnight now. I thought I heard a please wait. 
the night. You know, I think the Inn at the Falls, if you want to go to a lovely uh, B&B or experience some of the most beautiful country that Northern Ontario has to offer, go to the Inn at the Falls. You might see a ghost, you might not. I'm not saying that nothing was there. I would say that uh, if you're at all, even the slightest bit scared about the possibility of ghosts, Inn at the Falls isn't for you. On the whole, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm on the fence. I'm not terrified completely of it, but I don't know if I would ever willingly go there on my own. My experience tonight was um, quite a bit of activity for myself as the psychic, seeing somebody or something in every room of that inn. And they all had a little story to tell. Jim and the pregnant woman was, uh, that was really, really uh, a very sad, disconnected energy out there. It made me upset and I was getting upset about the control that this man had in that place. And he had no remorse. To the day he died, he kept that quiet. Miss Nivens was my favorite, to be, to be honest. Um, she was showing me uh, the interest that she had in every guest that was coming to the house. She welcomes you and she makes sure that you're safe, you're tucked in at night, and that the other spirits and ghosts will leave you alone while you're staying there. The woman in white was in that house. Uh, she was following us throughout most of the house, most of the inn, but I think she was there to make sure that we weren't going to be uh, uh, drinking too much, causing too much trouble, being loud to, to everybody, disturbing horses, that type of thing. She was in there to keep the peace and to, to be the mother hen to us, to make sure that we were there to, to uh, keep the peace and not to cause any trouble. The little girl that I had felt um, it was, um, she wanted to be seen. There's other people that have been in there that have seen the little girl, but I talked to the little girl and she was quite happy with everything that was going on. She had, had acknowledged that I had noticed her. She had noticed the dark energy also in the same room and she wasn't as frightened because I was paying attention to her. She was a good kid. She just, uh, something happened to her within the neighborhood and she had passed away. The inn would be some place that would be amazing for someone to see some activity. Just stay in room 105. The anticipation of you wanting to see a ghost in that room at night, they wait. They have the patience of, of a saint and they wait until you're right asleep and then all of a sudden they'll just pounce on you and they'll wake you up and they will scare you right out of that bedroom. Well, we're done the ghost walk here at the Inn at the Falls in Bracebridge, Ontario. Not as much activity as we all were hoping, but then again, we had a lot more activity Friday night and it was unique for us because we don't often stay on location. Lesson is, next time we stay on location, film some stuff. We saw, we came, we conquered. Well, you, you bullied. I bullied. Uh, and uh, all I can say is, come and stay at the Inn at the Falls if you dare. Toodles. Night. Did that bear just say, I like head? <laughs> I could have sworn that's what the bear just it said. I like hugs. Oh. Same thing. Hugs same head. Thing. It's the same thing. Hey, as long as they're warm. Um, so. <laughs> Holy crap, if you go look outside, there's so many orbs. They're like falling. It's the snow. Got it. Still you say tomato, I say it's tomato. It's the Matrix or it's snow. <laughs> <laughs> Timbit? Tum Timbit? Tum Timbit? Tum Timbit? No, no, yeah, good, thank you. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like frivolous emails. Timbit? because I keep deleting them in hopes that it removes me from it. Well, it only makes it worse. Do you want to it? It got bored. I wanted to go for a ride. No. No.